before we deal with tested succession, I, I want us to go through polygamous marriages, which are provided for in section 40 of the Law of Succession Act. Okay, polygamous marriages is where a man marries more than one wife. According to section 40 of the Law of Succession Act, okay, the properties of the deceased are to be divided according to the number of children. And each child is considered as one unit. And a wife is also considered as a unit. So the issue that we need to address today is whether this section is just and fair. Is it just and fair? I want us to picture, to picture this. Eh? So the, the, the deceased and the man married a first wife. They have been living together for 10 years. They have children. Within the 10 years, they acquired several properties to include land, money, there's a shares, all properties. So within the 10 years, they acquired properties. So after 10 years, this man married a second wife. So this after 10 years, the man married a second wife. So should the first wife and the second wife get equal shares. Does this sex section cause an injustice to the first wife? You see, the first wife contributed to the acquisition of this property before the second wife came into the picture. So she contributed. You know, <clears throat> according to our laws, even a monetary contribution is considered. If you go to the laws, matrimonial properties, none, none, monetary contribution is considered. Okay, I'm going to rely on this case of succession number 16 of 2010, where Justice Mombi Goge stated that this wife contributed in other ways, including to, including bearing her 10 children with the deceased, looking after them and the deceased, as well as looking after the home. Perhaps tilling the land and producing food and cash crops. So that is contributory. Even though it is not financial, it is contributory and it is considered. So within these 10 years, the first way, whether she was employed or not, she contributed indirect through bearing children, taking care of them, taking care of the home. That is still contribution. So all the properties of the deceased that were acquired before the second wife came to, into the picture, the first wife is entitled to, to a portion of the properties. And uh, I'm going also to rely on the case of probate and administration cost 244 of 2002, where Justice Kemondo stated, and um, I'm going to state it, eh? I'm going to state that it will lead to a serious injustice to apply section 40 blindly. It will lead to a serious injustice to apply section 40 blindly. And also, Justice Mumbi Goge in this case of uh, succession number 16 stated, and this is this is what I mean. This is what I'm going to I'm going to quote eh? to equate the widow to children or the first widow to widows who enter the home decades later who may be the age of the first widow's children and make no contribution to the acquisition of the estate registered in the name of the deceased is to, perpet to perpetrate an injustice against women that cannot be justified under any circumstances. So we have seen that this section, according to the presidency and the case law, this section causes an injustice to the first wife. This is because the first wife contributed to the acquisition of this property even before the second wife came into the picture. So when these properties are divided equally, ama or sorry, or when these properties are divided equally between the first wife and the second wife, or even the widow is equated as one unit as the last born of the of the second wife, it is an injustice. It is a great injustice. To the first wife. And that's why Justice Kemondo, in this case of profit and administration, number 244 of 2002, he, he stated, eh, and he stated that 
there was a resulting trust that the first tribe made contribution to the acquisition of the properties. And therefore, all properties that were acquired before the second wife came, came into the picture, the first wife was given 50% of those properties. The first wife was given 50% of the properties. The other 50%, that was the only properties that were free properties of the deceased, that were... <clears throat> supposed to be distribution distributed sorry distributed to the two houses so the first one gets 50% of the properties that were acquired during the subsistence of her marriage with the deceased before the second wife came into the picture the other 50% was to be distributed according now to the number of houses to the number of children that is the in this case actually it's it has uh, it has solved the injustices against the first the first tribe. In this case, the second wife appealed. Uh, the second wife appealed. Civil uh, appeal number fifty of twenty sixteen, and the judgment was delivered on. Judgment was delivered on. Sorry. Judgment was delivered on fourth April twenty eighteen, and this is what the court of appeal judges stated. That. The first wife, her indirect contribution through the management of the family home and the farming brought in income and this enabled the business to grow and the disease to invest through purchase of the property. The non-monetary contribution was equivalent to financial contribution towards the purchase of the property up to 1984 when now before the second wife came into the picture. Therefore, the Court of Appeal judges agreed with, the, with Justice Kemondo and stated that there was a resulting trust in favor of the first wife. And therefore, I'm going to read verbatim, Mary having been an active participant in the acquisition of the properties, the apportionment of 50% interest adopted by the learned judge in, according, in accordance with the maximum of equity, equality, is equity cannot be faulted. Therefore, the appeal was dismissed. Therefore, this case of justice came on. It solved the inequality that is brought by Section 40. That courts should not apply Section 40 blindly. They should also consider the first wave contributed to the acquisition of the property before the second wave came into the picture. Yes, the, the court should also consider that the first wave made a contribution either monetary or non-monetary and therefore this case solved the injustice this is uh, it is supported by this case of justice mumbi gode where she uh, she relied heavily on this case of justice kemondo and therefore the 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 deceased the, the property that were acquired by the deceased of the first wife are to be divided equally between the deceased and the first wife. So the first wife has at least 50% interest on the property, then the other 50% is to be divided according to the number of houses. So that is the, that is the, at least I think the, we need to change the section, we also consider the interest of the first wife, yes. But the properties that were, will be acquired when the first wife is there and the second wife, they will be divided equally between the two houses because the, the both wives were there, properties were, were, were acquired. So as a second wife, make sure that your husband acquires more property after you are married so that you can also get a bigger share of the deceased properties. That is all for now.